Hi everyone, Kim Jong-un's assassinated half-brother here, and this iceberg is really, really, really long. I just, <sighs> I, just I just don't have anything else to say. Just get started on layer one. <laughs> This is gonna be more of the meats and potatoes of who Nick is and what mukbangs are. So if you didn't really have any idea of who Nikocado Avocado is, pay attention to this layer because this is the one that explains everything. So we're gonna start off with. <laughs> Excuse me, um, I'm kind of new to this, so I want. What do you want from me, man? I don't believe in the Girl Scouts. No, 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 you got it all wrong. I just want to talk about Atlas VPN. This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Right now, Atlas VPN is providing a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month. Atlas VPN can be used to encrypt your data and hide your virtual location. One click and it's that simple. You can get epic features such as enjoying fast speed so you can stream your Netflix shows with no buffering, protecting unlimited devices so that your family and your friends can be protected at all times, stopping malware and ads. This is more than just a VPN. And of course, getting epic deals while shopping online. Be sure to act quick, Atlas VPN is providing a 3 year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a money back guaranteed of 30 days. So be sure to click the link in the description, atlasvpn.com slash accessiblefunky to get this really really good deal. So uh, what do you think? If you want to know more about Nick Kikado, you gotta learn about mukbangs, my guy. I'm sure most of y'all know what mukbangs are, so I'm gonna go over this really quickly. It's just the type of video where someone would just sit down in front of a camera and have a meal while talking to their audience in front of that said camera. And it was popularized in South Korea as most people live stream their meals and lunches so they can socialize with their chat while having a good meal. Soon, the popularity of mukbangs grew from South Korea into all over Asia and North America. And this is where Nick comes in. You see, Nick was special because he was one of the first American men to start making mukbangs. He started in 2016 while committing to his vegan diet. And I think you know where the story leads to. Mukbangs just de into eating shit tons of fast food and cutting up live animals and crying and shitting in the sea and all that. Mukbangs have become just how much can a human being really eat at a time? Orlin is Nick's husband who they met on a vegan Facebook group where their relationship progressed enough for Nick to move to Colombia. Soon the relationship developed, they got married, Nick got kicked out of Colombia and moved to Florida. That's a story we'll explain later. And Orlin began appearing in Nick Akato's videos where they first started making cutesy couple content and even participated in some of Nick's vegan mukbangs. However, after Nick stopped being vegan and had a more varied and open diet, Orlin would join along too and would eat any food Nick had in the mukbangs. So when Nick started to eat tons of fast food, Orlin ate with him too and he got huge. This caused the relationship to deteriorate drastically. They always fight, argue, cry, break up, cheat on each other. Although it could be staged because, you know, Nick Akato isn't alone when he does his OnlyFans content. 
So Nick Akato began his online presence talking about his vegan diet and he would begin making his mukbang videos eating this vegan diet and it was an extreme vegan diet. You could say he went from one extreme to the other. What he used to do is that he used to eat raw veggies and fruit like a raw vegan diet and because of this and how his physical health got deteriorated and how he became annoyed at his community, Nick began to question his veganism. Veganism needs to be less about being an attention horse sellout, do some activism, and serve others. Please don't tell me what I should do with my channel. It's like telling me, you need to do this with your life. Telling me to do more activism so that I can, I can be at your vegan level. It's like we're all trying to be the better vegan here. Just because I'm vegan, doesn't mean that my entire life has to be about veganism. From all the junk food he eats, Nick Akaro is susceptible to having mental breakdowns on camera. Then there's a lady behind me feeding cats! She's feeding the stray cats! Don't feed, don't feed the... He's claiming all the fast food he's eating is making him more emotionally and uh, mentally unstable. I could agree with that. He began uploading videos titled, Nobody Likes Me, I'm Done, and My Life Is Falling Apart. And pretty much whenever he feels like he's gonna have a meltdown, he just grabs the camera and just starts recording whatever happens because they get a lot of views. And he also said on various magazines and interviews with YouTubers that he's always been this dramatic. So he decided to take that to his advantage to grow his YouTube channel. And now meltdowns, as you can see here, are now a staple on his YouTube channel. I think it's very obvious with the amount of food Nick Akato's been eating lately that weight gain is a big problem that he's facing right now. Back in his vegan days, he used to say that he used to weigh around 160 pounds. That's around uh, 72 and a half kilograms for my non-American folks. And the most recent weight update we gotten from him claims that he's 320 pounds. That's about 145 kilograms, and he could easily hit 400 if he keeps up the pace that he's eating. And if it isn't obvious, this weight gain has been causing a lot of health problems for him. Just recently, he claims that he got disabled after he sneezed and broke three of his ribs. And of course, he took advantage of that, making videos of, this is the diet of a disabled person. McDonald's hairline. What could I say? Dude's got that motherfucking McDonald's hairline. In September 2021, Keemstar brought Nick and Leafy on Drama Alert to have some sort of debate. I watched the interview and I honestly had no fucking idea what was going on. It was mostly just Leafy calling Nick fat like the entire video and just him bemoaning that he got banned off of YouTube. Meanwhile, Nick is just saying that he's not fat and it's just water weight that's making him fat and he's, you know, trying to argue how he's not fat. This is one of the most pathetic interviews I've heard from any YouTuber ever. Dude, he's getting fatter. I'm not fat, it's water weight. It's just water weight, you asshole. Dude, so much has changed in only six months. Six months ago, I still had a YouTube channel. We did this small little interview. I had no intention of coming back. Now, I have no YouTube channel. Nick's even more fat. He's eating more sh And I have no YouTube channel once again. Sh website. Nick, honestly, like, I mean, you were a little chubby because you've been doing the move balls, right? Right, right? And I'm showing people how much weight I'm losing, and I can't lose weight. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't. I'm stuck. And for some reason, I'm still overweight. So I'm pretty sure it's just water. Nick, Nick, okay. Because of Nick's reputation as some toxic, shitty, disgusting, and kind of awful person in general, there's a lot of people who have decided to take advantage of that and make cringe compilations of him. You know, if you just search Nikocado cringe on YouTube, you'll find thousands and thousands of videos of people compiling most of his low moments and maybe funny moments. I guess I'm technically guilty of doing the same thing. I mean, I'm kind of explaining and compiling all of the worst moments of Nick's career 
and just spelling it all for you right now. So the Right Opinion video, if you don't know who the Right Opinion is, he's a, he's a British YouTuber who makes really long commentaries on troublesome people such as other YouTubers and some celebrities. In August 2020, the Right Opinion uploaded a four hour documentary titled The Never Ending Nightmare of Nikocado Avocado from Vegan to Villain. It's basically just a synopsis of Nick's origins on his online career, how he grew into one of the most infamous YouTubers of all time, and how it's affecting the mukbang community and his personal life. If you're really interested in Nikocado Avocado, just sit back, relax, get some popcorn, and enjoy this four hour epic. He loves Popeye's chicken sandwich. There's no denying it, he's made numerous mukbangs where he ate probably hundreds of sandwiches at this point. He also made a nice little tune about it while he was having a mental breakdown in his car. Popeye's chicken sandwich. Popeye's chicken sandwich. Popeye's chicken sandwich. No! Tea Time is just a segment in his videos where he would talk about drama and other stories. And even though it's called Tea Time, he doesn't have tea. It usually just comes with a large soda from this fast food place or a sponsored water bottle. And he would just mostly talk shit on other YouTubers. Orlin, maybe some other people in his life the one fast food employee that like took a minute longer than usual and he got pissed at them stephanie sue this is going to be a big entry because this is such a large drama the drama between himself and stephanie sue is probably one of the largest moments in the mukbang community because it really solidified nick akato as the villain in december 2019 nick and two other mukbang youtubers stephanie sue and zach Choi, made a mukbang video together where they just ate noodles and you know talk with each other have a laugh you know, typical collaboration stuff god it's Phoebe because we're eating noodles, noodles. oh you knew the class at the end or did you make it up oh you knew the class at the end or did you make it up you're a fake fan I see that I see that every every video no, but when you Four days later, after the collaboration came out, Stephanie Sue would come out with a video titled Why I'm Scared of Nick Akato Avocado. Basically, it was just her explaining how Nick Akato was harassing her in the DMs and that she he would also secretly photograph her home while making the mukbang collaboration. She also felt uncomfortable while filming that video with Nick. Sometimes Nick would make jokes about personal stuff that Stephanie Sue only told him about, such as in and out out of sleep as being one of the most prime examples. In and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. In and out, in and out. Hopefully you can trust me now. I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And Stephanie Sue's video went viral. At the time of recording, it has 14 million views. And of course, Nick Akato just got shat on with backlash. And this would lead to a constant back and forth from Nick Akato and Stephanie, where they would each make videos and replies to the videos and so on and so on. Zach Choi would seek legal counsel against Nick for the allegations. Two years later, in September 2021, Nick Akato claimed to Mel Magazine that the feud was entirely orchestrated to benefit both his online careers and Stephanie's online career. Keep in mind, Stephanie Sue did not say anything on whether or not Nick was telling the truth or not, so take this with a grain of salt. He claims that he wanted to play the villain and that he utilized his performance arts education to enact this drama. Make sure nothing falls, do something useful. Don't just sit there like a lump on the log. <laughs> Before Nick Akata began an online career, he was a professional violinist. He used to play for weddings, join orchestras, and even advertise his own violin skills on an old Twitter page, at Perry Violinist. Back when he was starting to make videos, he would mostly showcase his violin playing along with the vegan mukbangs that he was making. However, ever since his mukbangs began to grow more popular, he focused less on his violin playing. He would occasionally play violin in his mukbang videos, but of course he's not taking it too seriously. 
Chick-fil-A feast. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. If you just scroll through Nikocado's channels, he eats a lot of Chick-fil-A. I love cheese. Dun dun. I love cheese. Cheers to Trisha Paytas. Cheers. And, um, new friendships. Aww. I know you consider people your friends very easily. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> and if there's one thing for Nick's mukbangs to be ironic about, it's the fact that he eats a lot of Chick-fil-A, despite the fact that they donate a lot of money to anti-gay organizations. And he is, in fact, gay and has a husband. I'm not trying to get political, and, and I'm not trying to hate on people who eat Chick-fil-A a lot. I do think Chick-fil-A is, in fact, very yummy. I'm um, just saying. In most of Nick's meltdowns, in fact, in most of his videos, he wears the iconic Walmart red shirt. Shit makes him look like Winnie the Pooh. And he's done so many meltdowns in this red shirt that there are YouTube compilations specifically made about these red shirt meltdowns. Nick has so many fucking channels. We got Nikocado Avocado, Nikocado Avocado 2, Nikocado Avocado 3, Noodle King, more Nikocado, Nikocado Shorts. There's six channels that he uploads on, and each of them he does big ass mukbangs, so he's gonna fucking die soon. His most active channel is more Nikocado. That's where he uploads like legit daily mukbangs of him just eating fucking hundreds of dollars worth of fast food. There are numerous clips where Nikocado has claimed that he shot himself, usually during his mukbangs. I do want to, <laughs> I do want to highlight this clip where Nick was Nick grabbed the camera right after he made a little accident in the bed. <clears throat> no. What the? F <laughs> what the f did you do? Clearly, I've had Popeye's chicken. Sandwich. Can you turn on that light, the big light? Popeye's chicken sandwich. And I also like the story where Nick claimed that he uh, defecated himself at the dentist's office where he explained in just excruciating detail of like what he had done in his pants. So anyways, long story short, I finally got in. I was waiting in the waiting room. I was watching HGTV and then they called me back. I went in. My hygienist came. She put on the little plastic tray. She's like, okay, now we have to call the doctor in to put on your attachments. The dentist... He did the first top row of teeth, which took forever, and all of a sudden, I felt my insides contract, like I was gonna give birth to something. And I squeezed with all my might, I squeezed my cheeks, and all of a sudden, I feel a sting like a wasp, right down, right in the middle of my cheeks. It's the fire noodle sauce leaking out. And I'm like, ooh, and I'm squeezing, and I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I am poop. I poop. I am pooping. I am pooping. And all of a sudden, my doctor comes, the dentist comes in. He's like, Nicholas. And I go, ooh. And it snaps me out of it, and my, my muscles were relaxing. And this gush of poop came running out my butt. And I feel warm, hot, Stingy sauce all over my cheek, around the around the where it comes out the hole. Everything is stinging, and my stomach hurts. Nick Akar believes he has some extreme metabolism, which allows him to make these extreme mukbangs. He's brought it up early on when he just phased out of making vegan mukbangs, and he thinks all the weight was caused from water and stress and he absolutely refuses to believe that these mukbangs are causing him to gain weight i have gained weight and i don't even know why i don't know why i have a fast metabolism i work out three times a week it's like this happened overnight you know everyone told me oh when you would change your diet you would get obese i stayed the same for months it's been three months now and this statement, it's just water weight, has become his branding now. I mean, I just bought his shirt, so I kind of just enabled him, so I'm kind of fucked up for that. It's really dangerous the way he thinks. If he truly doesn't believe that these mukbangs aren't causing the weight gain, he's gonna die at 40. 
Now, of course, he could be lying and just saying that as an act, but come on, man. He's, he can't fake eating all that food and like notice and like visibly growing in weight. I'm sure throughout Nick's careers, there have been numerous canceled collaborations with other mukbangers, especially after the Stephanie Sue incident where a lot of YouTube mukbangers kind of turned their backs on Nick Akato. Before committing the tragedy that is Astral World, Travis Scott did in fact have a meal with McDonald's where they had a, if I remember correctly, a bacon quarter pounder with a medium fries and a Sprite. Of course, Nick Akato would make mukbangs of that meal as it was the hot shit, and and he would constantly get Travis Scott's name wrong, with Travis Scoot being one of the examples. Okay, so I'm here at McDonald's and I'm an eyelash in my eye. We are gonna be trying the Travis Scoot meal. And I'm like, what is this Travis thing? I think he is like a tennis player or a basketball player. I could be wrong. So Nick has a cameo. If you don't know what cameo is, it's basically a website where you can commission a celebrity to record a specialized message for someone as a gift or for yourself if you want to treat yourself to like Snoop Dogg saying happy birthday to you or something. Now, now, Nick Akato does have a cameo. Let me just search him up real quick. Nick Akato Avocado, here we go. Where you can pay $149? Whoever booked the cameo from Nick had a friend who was a Danganronpa fan, and Nick Akato had a lot of trouble pronouncing that. And you're a huge Danganronpa fan? I don't know what that is. Let's try to say this again. Dangaropa. What's Dangaropa? Uh oh, you're gonna be really upset. I don't know what this is. Let's ask Siri, because you know Siri knows all the answers. Hey Siri, what's Dangaropa? I'm calling corporate. I'm gonna get my money back. This piece of junk isn't answering. Hey Siri, what's Dangaropa? She's not even answering. I'm calling corporate. Hey, oh my gosh, well, I hope you like the dang on bro. In the early vegan mukbang days, Nick had a bird that would sit on his shoulder while he ate. Its name was Mr. Noodle, and viewers have noted that the color of its feathers were changing, which caused accusations of animal negligence. And then the parrot would just abruptly stop showing up in Nick's videos, which caused more accusations such as Nick eating the parrot or it just died of starvation or something because I guess Nick kept eating all its food or something. However, it was soon revealed that Mr. Noodle in fact was left in Colombia and is taken care of by Orland's family. So thank God it's not dead. You know what I mean? Don't worry, boo. Michelle Obama says pizza is a vegetable. Michelle Obama says pizza is a vegetable. No, Michelle Obama did not say that pizza is a vegetable. In regards to Nick, that intro was just him making fun of the fact that pizza is a vegetable and that he can eat it all he wants and he'll think it's healthy. So back then, the Obama administration was advocating for healthier school lunches to combat child obesity that was growing in the United States. However, when voting for the annual spending bill for the Department of Agriculture, Congress announced that pizza was in fact a serving of vegetables. They determined that the two tablespoons of tomato sauce was in fact a serving of vegetables. Does it make any sense at all? No, of course not. You want to know why they did it? Money. You know those pizza makers and potato growers for the french fries flex their good old lobbyist muscles to make sure that Congress would still allow them to sell pizzas and fries to kids so they could still keep making that dough. <laughs> In his first heart attack grill mukbang, yeah, he made three. I lied. He made eight. He literally just made one as I'm editing this video. What the fuck? The restaurant has a scale in the front where you can weigh yourself. And it's there because if you weigh more than 350 pounds, you could eat there for free. And before Nick stepped on the scale, he believed he was around 160 pounds. Keep in mind, this was one year into making the more varied diet mukbangs where he started eating more fast food. So when he stepped on the scale, he was in disbelief of what it said. So let's see how much I weigh. I don't even know. I think 160, maybe 160. Weigh yourself here. So we're gonna step right up. That has to be wrong. You guys, I'm 200 pounds. That's right, 200 pounds. He gained 
40 pounds making these mukbangs. That didn't really stop him from making these mukbangs more and more ridiculous. Beastie Boo Boo Sick. So there's a private Twitter account at Nikocado Avocado. Seems legit. It has 140,000 followers. So it must be official. However, it's private. So I can't really get access into this Twitter account. Judging from what it says on the bio, I don't know if I want to see it or not. Yeah, I sent him a follow request on my Twitter account at Accessible Funky. And I still haven't gotten any response back. So I think I have to pay for his OnlyFans or something to get access. Candy Godiva, better known as Hungry Fat Chick, is a mukbang YouTuber and frequent Nikocado collaborator. She has a channel that's around 240k subscribers and makes similar videos to Nick. She started in 2010 where she would eat literally everything. She has eaten Massive Italian Feast, Jolly Bee, ribs and mashed potatoes and corn another italian a lot of italian feasts actually tikka masala pho for my oh, oriental amazing. brethren taco bell she eats she eats a lot and she first collaborated with nick in 2018 and now they do constant collabs on both her channel and nick's channel travis scabs is another misremembrance of travis scott's name in the video that i mentioned before <laughs> <laughs> and the moment where they bicker about how to pronounce Travis Scott's name is... It's, it's, it's just fucking scuffed. Hey guys, we are going to be doing the Travis Skeeter meal. And I got everything here you and the Travis it comes... Scoot. Tra it's whatever the Travis his... Scoot. It's a Travis Scoot, like a scooter, like the one you have to Scoot, use. Scoot, Skeet, Scott, I don't even know. So Nick has a Patreon with three tiers. And going on his Patreon, it's very clear that it's probably porn. You must be 18 plus to view this content. I am in fact 18, so let's hop in. So as you can see, there are three tiers to his Patreon. Let's see, his first layer is Patron, $8 a month. Okay, not too shabby. And again, must be 18 plus to join. And you'll get uncensored mukbangs not allowed on YouTube. I guess because of foul language and topics. All access patron, $16 a month. That's fucking Netflix money. And you get vlogs, personal life updates not allowed on YouTube, whatever that means, behind the scenes footage, and an access to Patreon only community. Still enticing. What's the top end? VIP patron. $24 a month. What the fuck? You think about it? That's $288 a year. And you get highly requested house tours, discounted merch. Oh shit, I could have used that. Live streams, non sexual nude body photos. And of course, Nick Akon makes a huge deal about this is where you can get all the edgy, you can't upload this shit on YouTube stuff. And as you can see, yeah, you can't upload this on YouTube. That's the gist of his Patreon, so if I just convinced you into joining this shit, God help you, my man. Wasted food, without a doubt, because of how much food he eats on his channels. There's gonna be times where he's not gonna finish everything, so yeah, what's he gonna do? He's gonna throw it away in the fucking trash. That's that's it. That's that's pretty much it. There's nothing much I can really say. Sometimes when I watch his videos, I'd skim to the end to see if he finishes it, and oh, what a fucking surprise. He didn't finish shit. Nancy. Apparently, Nancy is Nikocado's lawyer. She made her first appearance on October 2021 on a mukbang video. However, there's a little, there's a little wrinkle in this story. Her name's not Nancy, and she's not even a lawyer at all. Her name is Carly Steele, and she's apparently the brand ambassador for Fashion Nova. She also has a mukbang channel where she eats with her boyfriend Josh. So that just begs the question: Why did Nick Akano make up Nancy? Who the fuck is Nancy? Is she even a lawyer? Is she even real? Nick Akato is a feeder. He probably is. I don't know his personal life, but judging from the fact of how huge Orland got, it kind of makes sense that Nick could be a feeder. 
However, I don't think Nick forced Orlin to eat all this food. Orlin had a choice. I'm sure Nick definitely encouraged Orlin to eat with him, you know, join in in the fast food fun and make him gain all that weight. The topic of an open relationship was very contentious with Nick and Orlin. Specifically highlighted in this video where Nick and Orlin are in the car together, Nick wants to keep a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Orlin. However, Orlin wants to experiment with a more open relationship. I guess he wants some time away from Nick Akato. And it's very clear that being with Nick is making him going fucking insane. It culminates in this heated argument with Nick citing the Bible? to refrain from an open marriage. And I was telling him that I want to have some quality time with my husband on the bed and he refuses because he says that he's out of breath. He's running out of breath. And he doesn't want to, uh, he doesn't want to let me open up the marriage because he says that we shouldn't open up the marriage. I believe in monogamy. I was taught to be monogamous. It's like, okay, then be monogamous. Do something. Touch your husband. Do anything to your husband other than telling him to do everything for you. You tell me that we should stay monogamous. That we should believe in monogamy. Because that's what you learned. Because that's what the Bible says. I think. Since when did you read the Bible? Did you ever read the Bible? Can you say what the first thing it says is? What's the first sentence? Thou shalt not be gluttonous. And there have been numerous allegations on both Nick and Orlin of them cheating on each other. So maybe Orlin got what he wanted. Pet sloth. I'm not going to get into this that much because there's another entry that highlights the fate of the sloth. When Nick and Orlin came back to Florida, they adopted a sloth and it was featured in many of Nick's early mukbangs. However, soon enough, it would abruptly stop appearing in the mukbangs like Mr. Noodle. And like I foreshadowed in the beginning of this uh, entry, we'll, f we'll soon figure out what happened to the sloth. Noodle King is one of Nick's YouTube channels, and judging from the name, it's mukbangs about noodles and various other Asian dishes. It's the least active YouTube channel. The latest upload was around eight months ago. And it's also a title that Nick probably gave to himself because he eats a lot of noodles. So corporate. Corporate is like a term that Nick uses a lot because he's basically a Karen. I'm calling corporate. I'm calling corporate. They don't carry anything in my size in this store. And it's a discrimination. This store is about to get sued because they don't carry XXXXXXL. Hello, uh, listen up for the people in the back. He's fired. He's fi- I- I got him fired, okay? In case you're curious, he's fired and he no longer works at Auntie Ann's. The audio on one of his old TikToks got removed due to community guidelines. The video is still up, but it's completely silent now. Side note, even though there are comments that say that there's no audio, if you save the video on TikTok to your phone, the audio gets restored. So this is what Nick is actually saying. I pooped myself. I woke up in a pile of poop. There's poop on my sheets. It's stuck in between my crack. I can feel the crusties. I knew there was something. Jesus, Mary, it's just chicken nuggets coming out my butthole. <laughs> Nick has a little brother named Angel, and he appears in some of Nick's mukbangs. <coughs> and whenever Angel shows up on camera, it's mostly with the theme of him trying out these foods for the first time. And he seems like a nice kid. Most of the people in the comments don't hate him. So, you know, hopefully he's doing good, especially because his last appearance was two years ago. Turns out Angel's the imposter. That's right, he appeared in Orland's mukbangs, posing as his little brother. So I don't know who Angel really is anymore. There are a lot of commenters who have a special empathy for Orlin, believing that he's stuck in an abusive and loveless relationship with Nick. And here are some of the Orlin stand comments. Orlin is so iconic. Good for him. He's choosing life over food and fame. I'm happy that Orlin is losing weight. I hope he keeps up the good work because he's looking healthier. 
Time will tell. Orlin looks amazing. Love the fact that he cares about really his health looks and mental health. Keep up the work. Orlin was actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. He was 100 pounds. 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 He was so this is two entries combined together. Yes, Nick Akata was in fact born in Ukraine on May 19th, 1992, and he was put up for adoption and moved to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. In October 2017, Nick uploaded a video titled, I'm Getting Deported, which he uploaded the same title three times, where he explained why he was leaving Colombia. Essentially, I am being forced to leave. The 25th is when my visa expires. I'm sorry, I don't want to cry during this, I really don't. <laughs> okay, so there's this law in Colombia. You can only stay 180 days at a time in this country. I've been here for 250. And we applied for the marriage visa. We couldn't apply for a marriage visa until five months. We've been married for seven months. April is when we got married. So May, June, July, August, September, October. It's now six months. We applied last month in September. And we finally got our results after applying for the visa and they rejected me to be able to live here with my family. He also said that he hates the third world. That's why I hate, hate the third world. Like the United States, they have everything regulated, everything in order. They didn't tell me anything. They're like, welcome to Colombia. Stamp on my passport. They didn't say, by the way, you can only be here for a week because you've been here for this many days. They have computers, they see it, immigration, they didn't tell me anything. And although in that video he said he would leave in a few days, he would later make a video in February 2018, like a few months later, we're seeing that he officially left. Most of Nick's thumbnails are fucking weird, man. Let's take a look at Nick Akato's thumbnails. Right away, I see him deep throating big ass chili cheese corn hot dogs and there's him slurping up some noodles and here's him crying with like shit all over his face next to Orlin and here's the um <laughs> and and here's the phase where he was disabled and that's just a CPAP mask on him by the way and here's him shirtless I thought the shirtless stuff was Patreon exclusive only but these are my favorites when with with Nick and Orlin legit eating each other's faces out holy shit and here's him and here's the iconic red box where he compared himself to his vegan days white here's some white stuff all over his face uh a shoe gets thrown on his face again so many videos with hungry fat chick fighting with orlin i can't i can't really explain these thumbnails to justice you just i just had to show you nick eats bees okay so this is talking about on his noodle king channel there's a video where he eats a large honeycomb with live bees on it still i don't know how the fuck he ate that without getting shit on by the bees oh mm. I don't know if he actually ate the bees. They're just hanging around on the honeycomb. He's eating the honeycomb. I couldn't find any evidence of Nick or Orlin being a barber at one point in their lives. However, Nick does seem to have some experience with cutting some hair. Okay, if you don't know what a gainer is, a gainer is someone who gets sexual gratification from gaining weight. So there's so there's communities of people who who like like really fit people who would intentionally gain weight because they get hard from it. Russian Orthodox wedding. I So the only reference to a Russian Orthodox wedding is this video, which happened to be their wedding day. Oh, here comes my fat wife. Orlin, stop! I'm being honest. You're supposed to respect marriage and be I'm honest. Skinny! Up my way, up the trip on my own wedding dress. Oh, here's my beautiful wife. Oh, I'm Colin Corbett. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Here comes my wife. Now hold in your cheeks so you don't poop on it. 
Squeeze them real tight. Oh! Squeeze them tight, sweetie. Stop! Sweet! You're my, you're my wife! In the description of Nick's videos, he said, This video is in no way made to disrespect Catholic or Orthodox weddings. I am a 4XL big man, and I couldn't find any wedding dresses that fit, so I had to use my bed sheet instead. Nothing is even mentioned about religion or orthodox ceremonies, so I'm not making fun of anybody or anything. I'm just a big girl trying to find clothes that fit for my special day. Nothing about religion. Okay, thank you. Have a blessed evening. At the end of the video titled 20,000 Calorie Cheat Day Challenge, Nick had to prematurely stop the video because his cat Blinky started pissing on his window curtains. Oh, it's yellow on my curtains. Did the cat pee on there? I hope not. Oh my god. I need to show you Binky. He got some bladder problems. And then we get treated to Nick's very labored breathing. In Nick's early videos, Orlin can be seen wearing the iconic Perry the Platypus hat. And the presence of that hat shows that this video is in fact from the past. Because I, I don't know what happened to the hat, Orlin decided it was out of fashion and he stopped wearing it. And he wore it a lot when he was in Columbia, but after he moved to Florida and stopped being vegan and all the other stuff, I can't imagine how I would feel if I saw Nick in public, in real life, I would try to ask for a picture, but I think he just scoot away. I would love, if you're watching this, Nick, I would love to have lunch with you. He has filmed himself going to Walmart a lot, and he has filmed himself going to the drive-through a lot. So it's fair to say that in his immediate vicinity, they are aware of his presence. So the next entry is called the railing video. What, wait, what, this says, it says this on my script. You guys see that? What's the railing video? <laughs> if you are Nicholas, please do not lie. What is the price? For your gay porn. So Nick has plenty of mukbangs where he eats loads of Korean noodles particularly the brand Bodak Bokumyeon, or hot chicken flavor ramen. These noodles became popular when the fire noodle challenge became viral on YouTube, where, where one person would try to eat these noodles as fast as they can. And of course, Nick being the prime example of a trend chaser, he would participate in these fire noodle challenges. And now he makes plenty of mukbangs where he would eat variations of these noodles. Okay, so Jasper is, appar <laughs> Jasper is apparently one of Nick Akato's boyfriends and he would usually appear after him and Orlin get into a rough fight and Orlin mysteriously disappears. For some reason he has only been shown on camera with a panda mask. He doesn't speak in Nick's videos and all he does is just doodle random shit on some paper but hold on you see that? Let's take a look very closely. I recognize that head shape anywhere. That's fucking Orlin! And like, yeah, Jasper's fake, as usual, like, and he's just a part of the fucking NCU, the Nick Akato Cinematic Universe. So there's, so there's, there's a whole arc on Nick's channel where Orlin's gone missing, right? And he left clues for Nick to try to find him, like some Blue's Clue shit. And, <laughs> and Nick, while filming these mukbangs, would show these clues on camera. We have, the first one he ever left me was, I left you because this is not who I fell in love with. And he did this horrible illustration and really, really, really insulting. I'm much bigger than that, thank you. And my arms don't look like that. And it's, <coughs> you can find me where you first soiled on me, which I knew was Sonic. 
So I went to Sonic yesterday and I, I saw this in the bushes. And this also looks nothing like me. What does it say? Too lazy to find me. Excuse me, I've been looking all over you for five days. And like, even if he did get those clues, does he even find Orlin? Does he even put in the effort to get off his fat ass and go find Orlin? Nugget telepathy. What the hell does that even mean? I guess sometimes Nick gets chicken nuggets thrown at him or other random shit thrown at him in his mukbangs. I, is that what it's talking about? It's not telepathy, it's just Orlin. Q, okay, so OnlyFans sent DMCAs to the website Kiwi Farms because they had hosted some of Nick's <sighs> content and that infringed on their copyright. The owner of the site, Noel, would combat this DMCA, claiming that OnlyFans had in their terms and conditions that they technically did not own the content Nick made on their website. So if this lawsuit falls through, I can't imagine being the lawyer that has to represent Nick's OnlyFans. Okay, so we're gonna talk about Nick Akato's Instagram. There's not really much to really talk about. It's just his it's just his Instagram, my guy. So this is his real Instagram account, Nick Akato Avocado underscore real. It's almost 60k followers. Good job. New account started over. So I guess his old account got hacked or something. He decided to redo his Instagram. So just looking from all these, <laughs> just looking through all this shit. So just skimming through. So we see good old fucking speed racer over here. Damn, he's, he's gotten huge. And there's Nancy or, or Carly, as I should say, because she's not really Nancy. Her name's not Nancy, although she is called Nancy in the videos. Uh, there's Nick crying with his merch. I identify as skinny. Here's him dancing. Here's him enjoying the day at the beach. Uh, here's him with hungry fat chick going to Walmart, having talking to himself with a picture, destroying his room. There's the nugget telepathy, and I have to log in to continue. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of his Instagram account. Prior to writing this video, I had no idea what Getter is. So apparently it's a conservative social media platform that's supposed to look like Twitter. It launched in July 4th, 2021. Oh, funny. When uh, Trump got banned off of Twitter after the January 6th incursion on the U.S. Capitol building. When Getter first launched, it was instantly filled with trollers and hackers uploading like porn and other weird shit. Nowadays, the hacking and trolling has calmed down and there are plenty of Nick Akato clones such as at Nick Akato and at Hot Mommy Milker, but none of them are official. When looking up Nick Akato Gaming, the only thing I could really find was this channel, and it's mostly just random gameplay of like Warzone or something, while a snippet of Nick Akato shittily green screened played in the corner of the video. I don't know if Nick had a real gaming channel, and if he did, I could not find it. Have you ever noticed that Nick and Orlin are always getting married every day, fighting every day, getting back together all the time. Orlin leaves Nick, Nick comes back to reconcile with Orlin. It always seems like it's a like Groundhog Day. It always seems like the same shit is happening on Nick's channel every single time. They've gotten married five, six times. Actually more if you're counting the older videos. They're always constantly fighting and then making out, making out with each other again. And they even use the same thumbnail templates. It always seems like the same thing is happening to Nick. Like look, look at these, look at these two thumbnails. They look the exact fucking same, except with different food. So Orlin has his own channel called Orlin Home. And there are rumors that he may not have control of his channel. Nick did in fact take over Orlin's first channel, and that channel has become Nick Akato Avocado 2. So it is quite possible that Nick has control over Orlin's channel. In fact, Orlin's channel, his current channel, began as Nick's channel. There was another mukbang channel, and then two weeks later, Orlin would take over and start uploading his own content on it. So I don't think Nick runs it. More say like, I'm sure Orlin and Nick are orchestrating these plot lines and other stuff that they're doing to garner views on their channel. Here it is. Here is the fate of Nick and Orlin's sloth. So apparently when Nick was feeding the sloth, it bit its finger and it bit it pretty hard. So here's a trigger warning, I guess. There's gonna be some blood in Nick Akato's chewed up finger uh, because I'm gonna show 
the clip of the attack. I'll play an audio cue when it's safe to look. So Nick was feeding Kiwi some hibiscus flowers and Kiwi bit him. I think she thought his finger was a flower. Is that the bite you got? I think so. So this is my finger. I wasn't exaggerating. I wasn't being a crybaby. My nail is chopped in half. It went through my nail. You're one of the few humans on the planet that have been bitten by a sock. I know, what an honor. In the video titled, Caught on Camera, Almost Stabbed at Jack in the Box, Not for Kids, Nick is eating some Jack in the Box in LA. And in the background, there's some crackhead just pacing around and tweaking and acting violent. Towards the end, it seems like the crackhead was threatening directly to Nick, claiming that he'll open his stomach open. Sure, I'd rather go right across the street. Of course, that terrifies Nick and he hides in the bathroom while talking to the camera. There, you saw like in the corner, the guy making faces and saying the remarks and saying stuff over and over. And it really got, I started to listen to what he was saying. It was very, very disturbing, like really creepy saying like, I want to whip you up. And he, like people were walking by outside and he's saying stuff like, um, Oh yeah, run faster before I, I cut your stomach. I mean, it's just terrible. I'm gonna try to open it up. It's pasted shut, but I feel liquid in here. Jasper shifting pigments? What the fuck does that even mean? Jasper wears a panda costume, and pandas are black and white. Maybe sometimes the person under the panda costume isn't Orlin. Maybe some white dude that Nick hired off of Fiverr or something to play as Jasper. Shrinking brain theory. I'm sure eating all that fast food every day must cause some neurological harm. Doing some research, I found some articles that indicate that humans have had their brains shrink in the course of their entire existence. According to the Wayne State University Press, our brains have shrunk by 17.4% in the last 20,000 years. Although most scientists have argued that our brains haven't shrunk at all, during the course of time. And there have been some studies on how fast food could affect the ability to learn and remember things. However, none of this explicitly applies to Nick. I have found on some forums that Nick claimed he was allergic to sulfur and sulfur is found in chicken and other sorts of meats. And apparently he blew up overnight after he ate 100 pieces of bacon. This happened when I did the 100 bacon challenge. When I ate 100 pieces of bacon, I just blew up overnight. It's because the meat has sulfur in it. I personally don't eat bacon that much because I know bacon's like a fattening food, but chicken is good for you, eggs are good for you, fish is good for you, some plants, not sugary ones. And I eat that off camera. Actually, my, my husband is very good in the kitchen. Excuse me, he knows exactly what to make me. So Nick made a video of him flying first class on Hawaiian Airlines after a vacation at Hawaii. Towards the end of the video, he wears a charcoal face mask as he eats some noodles. Although the entry calls it the black face incident, it's, it's obviously not him trying to be racist or anything. He's just wearing a fucking charcoal mask to like exfoliate his pores or whatever. If you want a better example of blackface, go watch a Shane Dawson video for all I care. Although I did find this video of Nick where he's eating some Taco Bell and he says Nick and Noodle. But the way he says it makes it sound like something else. Nick and Noodle. Nick and Noodle. Nick and Noodle. From what I've found, Nick has invited two ex-boyfriends and one ex-girlfriend onto his mukbang videos. Okay, the first one we're going to be talking about is Eric, who is not in fact Nick's boyfriend. He has a YouTube channel which has over 1.7 million subscribers and does food challenges like the 100,000 calorie challenge and the Ultimate American Fast Food Cheat Day Challenge, 30,000 calories plus. And in his channel bio, he discovered that at a young age that he was able to eat large amounts of food without it affecting his body. And he decided to make that uh, as a career. And the dude's fucking shredded. Dude is built like a goddamn tank. And he collaborated with Nick 
under the pretense that he's his ex-boyfriend, but he's not. Yeah, I don't know if they actually dated. Maybe they did date. I could be wrong. Maybe they did date in the past. And then we got the second ex, Sammy. She first appeared on the video, Sushi with my ex-girlfriend. And to quote from the description, she started out as my best friend and later became my girlfriend as we grew up together in, in school. And she broke up with Nick once she came out as lesbian, but they still remain as good friends. And look, I'm gonna show a clip of her eating with Nick and just, 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 just to be nice. Not the laughing. things I've done in this room. Oh my god. <laughs> Hi, little sloths. Hi everyone, today's a very special video because I'm here with my ex-girlfriend who is now lesbian, but we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> I was so gay that she's like, I have to go the other way. I'm like, yeah, me too, bye. <laughs> like, basically, it's really true. What what grade were we in when we had our, like, thing? You? Fourth? Fourth grade. Fourth, fourth into fifth grade, yeah. Are we talking about the thing in the bushes or the other? <laughs> Good God. <laughs> so she yeah, so she's still on good terms with Nick and um, here's a clip of her dressing up as a dude to act as Nick's ex-boyfriend. And the last ex I'm gonna be talking about is him. His name is never revealed, as Nick only refers to him as ex-boyfriend. And it's clear that he he doesn't wanna be in that video. He doesn't say a single word. He looks fucking terrified of Nick the entire time. And when Nick starts like hiccuping or some shit, he just leaves. He just leaves and doesn't come back. So it's probably just some actor that Nick hired off of fucking Fiverr. And he clearly had to deal with more than his pay was worth. So he just fucking left. The planned weight loss arc. This is sort of connected to the idea that Nick is playing a character. So he's been eating all these mukbangs for years and years to get YouTube money and views and attention. And that later on, once he decided he's had enough, he would just quit out of the blue and lose all the weight. I'm sure he knows that eating all of this food is terrible for him. No water weight science or any fucking identifying as skinny is going to fix the fact that he might die at 40 if he keeps it up. And I want to believe this is real. I don't want to watch Nick and Orlin eat themselves to death. So, if he does plan to lose weight in the future, and he plans to quit uh, mukbangs and it's all just a show, he's not, I just hope for the best. So anytime Nick does a mukbang with Orlin, Orlin just has to say some shit that's just out of pocket, man. I, I want to consider Orlin's uh, offhand comments as unnecessary because sometimes it makes up the entire content of that mukbang video. Not for me because I don't want to mess up my nails. I thought you were a dainty girl. Shh! Put it on the cloth! Get on your own, you dainty girl! Put it on the cloth, Orlin. Put it on the cloth right now, go. Okay, Nick. It's really hot and steamy. Shh! Stop calling me that, I do have a neck. Where? Where's your neck? Lost and found? Lost and found at Target. So I'm just gonna get into this, and I'm not even gonna eat the whole thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat like a little bit, okay. Just a little bit. Oh, okay, for queen of moderation. You're always I'm moderation. the queen of moderation. Let's be real. I'm the queen, right? The only moderate thing about you is how moderately slowly you lose weight. Okay, twisting words. Oh, you know, trying to be all fancy over here. Um, I lost... 89 LBs? You lost 89 LBs eating nothing but rice and potatoes? Is that what you want to tell them? Yes! I- Oh look, it's a hippo dressed in black. I look like a bowling ball, thank you. Literally a bowling I look ball. fabulous! Fabulously fat. <laughs> I can't find my- Well make fun of the way you look. You have no chin bones. This is why you have this massive banana under your neck. Publicity. Oh, am I going on TV now? Are people writing articles about me now? No one wants you on are TV. People, no one wants people, to write an article about you. Am no I one getting wants collabs to have you on TV. now? Oh, no one no. wants you. I'm not getting any No one collabs wants you. No one what wants you. What am I getting you. out of this? What What am I getting out obesity, of this? Obesity. Morbid obesity. So on Nick's Patreon, he mentioned that he had behind the scenes videos, which may or may not be NSFW. 
I haven't pulled the trigger on buying the $24 a month tier. If anyone has watched these behind the scenes videos and just wants to like, just describe it in the comments, you know, go for it. I just hope he doesn't sue me because like I'm leaking his Patreon. I'm encouraging to leak his Patreon stuff. Please don't fucking sue me. In the description of every mukbang video, there's certain credits that Nick Akato leaves which includes executive producers with a certain individual standing out. Jamie Babycato. They probably want to first Nick's patron supporters and doing a quick Google search, I couldn't really find much about them. There's only a couple of fan pages on Twitter named after them, but they're pretty inactive and empty, so there's not much known about Jamie Babycato. Horny in the desert refers to a tweet from Nick Akato's private Twitter where he is in fact horny in the desert. Here it is. Uh, I know it's from his private Twitter. Again, don't sue me, Nick, please. It's not worth it and I'm poor. Robbie was once fatter than Nick Akato. News flash everyone. Everyone was fatter than Nick Akato at one point. When he was a fucking vegan, he looked like a pile of twigs. And now he's huge. And I don't know who Robbie is. According to the Reddit post of the iceberg, apparently it's the dude who created this iceberg's name. Listen, Robbie, if you're a skinny legend now, congratulations, lations, man. So r slash Nick Akato Avocado was a subreddit keyword was where uh, Nick Akato fans would uh, discuss about all the mukbangs that he enjoyed and I'm just kidding they just fucking wanted to ask for the porn that he was making they also talked about all the drama that Nick was involved with especially the Stephanie Sue stuff and all that it is banned and I think it's because of DMCA maybe someone did leak uh, Nick's OnlyFans and now it's gone Ooh, doesn't this look good? Oh, it got on my shirt. Ah, oh my gosh, I'm out of food. Ah, and it's your fault. So there's rumors that Hungry Fat Chick might be having an affair with Nick. And uh, Nick has been accused of cheating on Orlin. And, but they never specified who. You know, this of course started stirring rumors because Nick and uh, hungry fat chick would always collaborate with each other all the time but other than that there really isn't any concrete evidence on whether or not nick did in fact uh clapped hungry fat chick's cheeks so we're just gonna move on purple toes refers to a deleted uh, mukbang where nick showed his audience his dogs and claims that his toes were turning purple now i looked I'm just gonna show the footage right now. If you don't wanna look at his toes, too fucking bad. I'm soaking my buggins. And not only that, but my toe just turned purple. I don't know why my toe is purple right there. Can you see? Look at the edge of the nail. It's purple. It's purple. My toenail turned purple. It hurts. It hurts. I need to fry these bunions off. Disgraceful. Oh, I can't even put my feet in here. Too big. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Ouch, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. But it doesn't look like they turned that purple. Although, like, if he keeps it up, he's gonna get that diabetes infection real quick. So Orlin had a YouTube channel that predates Nick's venture into YouTube. It was simply named Orlin Home, and the channel just had mostly vegan related content talking about the benefits of veganism and sometimes Nick would appear to do like a funny skit or sometimes do that cutesy couple style content. As mentioned earlier, this channel would soon become Nick Akato Avocado 2 and Orlin moved on to uh, another channel which was Nick's old channel. Again, if you go on Nick Akato's Patreon, you can find vlogs where you can get a quick insight into his life. You just have to pay, I think, $16 a month. Uh, you're gonna have to sacrifice your Netflix subscription to get that shit. And you can get very, very interesting vlogs, very riveting and interesting vlogs like Shopping Haul, my first shopping haul spread. Come shopping with me, follow me around the store again. And of course, naked cooking food lol. Because of how long Nick has been making videos, there's a fair amount of unlisted videos that may or may not exist in his filmography. 
if that's what you want to call his um, YouTube channel. Most of the unlisted videos are Patreon content that he locks behind a paywall with the uncensored mukbangs that are a little too risque for YouTube. Haven't subscribed to his OnlyFans, finding the, oh man, I'm finding the will to not f pay for his OnlyFans. Oh no, I want his OnlyFans so bad. So apparently in the comments of the Reddit post where this iceberg came from, some people who have looked at his OnlyFans say that the comments are pretty sus, not gonna lie. If you just think about who would subscribe to Nikocado's OnlyFans, it's mostly people who may have a fat fetish or a cuck fetish or something like that. And look, I'm not here to like kink shame anyone or anything. If you're into that, you know, that's fine. Um, like there's just a lot of weird shit that's being said on Nikocado's OnlyFans comments, okay? The vegan fairy is real. What the fuck is a vegan fairy? I could not... I could not find anything about a vegan fairy. Maybe Nick dressed up in some fucking Tinkerbell costume and like said that he was the Tinkerbell or the vegan fairy or something. I could not find much about the vegan fairy and being real. At first, the vegan fairy of what it is, like what the vegan fairy is and if they're real at all. Um, probably not. I don't know. I don't know. I love snacks. Is it really a surprise that Nick likes snacks? This actually seems to be referring to a quote that Nick said. I'm sure he said it so many times when he's eating those blue Takis or whatever. Maybe he's calling Orlin a snack in the OnlyFans or something. Oh God. Oh. Jesus Christ, my knees are gonna buckle. Now we are on layers eight, nine, and 10. And I wanna be honest with y'all. What the fuck are these entries? We got some entry. Okay, so layer eight is a little weird. So some of the explanations that I saw on the Reddit comments include infinite cheese, which is talking about how Nick has cheese fountains on his mukbangs and the infinite cheese is just referring to like just how much cheese there is in the fountain. It seems like it's infinite cheese, you know what I mean? And some of the other shit makes no sense. Like Nancy save points. What does that mean? Are we in a fucking video game or something? And then Nick likes food, duh. And then we get Nick hates fast food, which I don't know. He maybe, maybe he does. Like if you really see he's making mukbangs, as just doing a job. He must hate all the food. He must be stuffing down his gullet. And you know, like if he's done it for such a long time and he's d and he's collected all this money, you would have thought he would have quit by now, but no, he just keeps going. I guess the money and the views and the attention, it's not enough. You know what I mean? And yeah, this layer makes no sense. And then layer nine, layer nine is just like weird shit. So we're apparently in the red box dimension and the red box refers to the outlines that are on the thumbnails on some of Nick's mukbangs. Like, especially when he shows his fucking fat gullet in like in the corner when usually when he's referring to um, making a weight loss, a weight gain update or something. And some of these entries are just wild. Like Walmart cl closet portal. What? <laughs> You're saying his closet is a portal to fucking Walmart? And then we got escaped clones. The real Orlin is trapped in the red box. Red box dimensions water weight effects. Skinny Nick is stuck in the red box dimension. Like, the iceberg gets really fucking weird here. And of course, none of these entries are real. It's just there for filler. And then layer 10. Layer 10. Jesus Christ, what's in here? Seven deadly sins. Okay, that's pretty easy. Nick represents all the seven deadly sins. Obviously, gluttony. And then we got lust because he likes to fuck Orlin in the ass all the time. Uh, greed. He keeps making mukbang videos. He keeps getting the YouTube rev and the coolest, coldest water bottle revenue. Uh, let's see, what else is there? We got pride. I guess he's too prideful to admit that he's getting, he's gaining all the weight from his mukbangs and. Uh, doesn't want to stop it. Uh, sloth, uh, a real sloth bit his finger off, and I guess he's, I don't know if he's lazy, because like he does make a lot of mukbangs. Wrath, yeah, he gets kind of angry at Orlin a lot. Envy, maybe he's jealous of Orlin. Uh, Envy's kind of a stretch. I don't really think he's like envious of anything. I think uh, maybe he's envious that 
Maybe Orlin ate more food than him that day or something. That's all I can really think of. The aliens are coming. What the fuck does that even mean? The Colombian water waiter. I guess that's just the name for Nick Akato. Uh, the Giga League. Okay. So that's talking about all the OnlyFans and other Patreon, like paywall locked uh, content that he's made. It, there was a really big leak that came out. Um, of course, I'm not going to link it. I don't want to get like into legal trouble with Nick or some shit. Like this whole video is going to get me into fucking trouble with Nick Akato anyways. Uh, Nick's real parents, he was adopted, uh, I don't think he knows who his real parents were, maybe he did. And 340, Nick's final breath, that fucking talks about the goddamn railing video. At that timeline, you can hear him fucking moaning, and that's like his last moan in the video. So yeah, that's the end of the iceberg, but before I cap it off, I just want to mention um, a recent development that happened in Nekakado's videos. So, what I'm talking about is, of course, the woman screaming in the background. Uh, on March 5th of this year, in fact, 2022, uh, Nikakado uploaded a video titled, Our Final Video Together, of course, talking about him and Orlin breaking up. So, he and Orlin are eating some nuggets and fries, and at around the 34 minute mark, you can faintly hear a woman screaming in the background. Okay, they taste like this, but, you know, a little greasier. Hmm. And none of them seem to have either heard them or acknowledged the screaming at all. Soon viewers would notice these sounds and quickly point them out to Nick Akato on his social media. He eventually addressed the situation via Instagram stories where he claimed that someone got stabbed in his apartment building. And his video might be used for evidence in the murder case. That's right, someone died during Nick Akato's videos. And of course, just because Nick said it doesn't mean it's immediately true that a stabbing did in fact happen in his building, but it did leave some viewers concerned. And it would get re-uploaded onto TikTok, get super viral, five million views of the screaming. And can you imagine you're in court, you get caught up for jury duty and it's for a murder case. And you're sitting there amongst the jury all nice in your suit and tie or, or uh, dress gown or whatever you wear and the and the and the defense rolls in with this Nick Akato video of the woman screaming and in the and like in between those screams just like Nick burping and farting and like screaming at Orlim how can you like god damn doing this iceberg it really took a toll on me I don't want to be fat. I don't want to be fat anymore. What is this? I don't want to be fat anymore. I want to identify as skinny. I'm going to be fucking skinny. Gaining weight, 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 weight. Gaining weight, 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 weight. Gaining. As I recall, I know Nick loves to show off Eating McDonald's ain't gonna make your dick hard What do I know? Gaining weight, weight, weight What do I know? Gaining weight, 